Today, you and I know that DNA is the hereditary material. But did scientists back then know this? Did they know that DNA, and not some other substance, was carrying the blueprint of life? The answer is no. So, let's take a deep dive into this story, and start our journey from the time when Gregor Mendel was performing his simple yet groundbreaking experiments on pea plants. The year was 1866. Mendel published the results of his experiments on pea plants. By studying traits like flower color, seed shape, and pod texture, he noticed that these traits did not blend in offspring but were passed down in specific patterns. Over several years, he crossbred more than 28,000 pea plants and discovered consistent ratios, like 3 is to 1 in single traits and 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 in 2 traits. From this, he proposed the existence of inheritance factors, what we now call genes. Although Mendel never knew about DNA or chromosomes, his laws of heredity, segregation and independent assortment, laid the foundation for the modern science of genetics and paved the way for later discoveries about. Decades later, in the early 1900s, scientists began to connect Mendel's invisible factors with something they could actually see under the microscope, chromosomes. In 1902, Walter Sutton and Theodore Bovary independently proposed what became known as the chromosome theory of inheritance. They suggested that Mendel's factors, the units of heredity, were carried on chromosomes. This was the first time heredity was linked to a physical structure inside the cell setting the stage for the search for the true hereditary material. But still, scientists were not sure. Was it really DNA, or could it be some other material that carried hereditary information? After all, chromosomes were made up of both proteins and DNA, and at that time, proteins seemed like the better candidate. They were complex, diverse, and well understood. DNA, on the other hand, looked too simple. So the mystery of the true hereditary material remained unsolved. Then in 1928, a British bacteriologist named Frederick Griffith was studying a bacterium called Streptococcus pneumoniae, the one responsible for pneumonia. He worked with two forms of this bacterium, a smooth type, which was deadly, and a rough type, which was harmless. When he injected mice with the smooth type, they died, obviously, because the bacteria were deadly. When he injected them with the rough type, the mice survived, simple, because they were harmless. Then he injected heat-killed smooth bacteria, and again the mice survived, because the bacteria were dead. And then he injected mice with a mixture of heat-killed smooth bacteria and live rough type, the expectation was clear, the mice should survive. After all, in both previous cases the mice had lived. But now comes the twist. Surprisingly, this time the mice died. Somehow, the harmless rough bacteria had been transformed into the deadly smooth type. Something had traveled from the smooth virulent bacteria into the rough harmless bacteria and made them virulent. Griffith called this, transforming principle. He didn't know what it was, but this experiment gave the first strong clue that some molecule was carrying hereditary information. So, the Griffith's experiment had uncovered a strange phenomenon. Some, transforming principle, was moving from the heat-killed smooth bacteria into the rough, harmless bacteria, making them deadly. But what exactly was this mysterious substance? That remained a puzzle. At the time, scientists had their own expectations. Proteins were the leading suspects. Why? Because they were chemically complex, highly diverse, and already known to play countless roles in cells. DNA, on the other hand, seemed far too plain, just four repeating bases, simple and unremarkable. Carbohydrates and fats were also considered, but proteins dominated the debate. This was the scientific mindset in the 1930s and early 1940s, and it set the stage for the next big step, the work of Oswald Avery, Colin McLeod, and Macklin McCarty, who decided to finally solve the mystery of the transforming principle. In 1944, Three scientists, Oswald Avery, Colin McLeod, and Macklin McCarty, set out to solve the mystery. 
They repeated Griffith's experiment, but with a clever twist, destroying one type of molecule at a time. When they destroyed proteins using protein digesting enzymes, even achieving 99.98% purity, the transformation still happened. When they destroyed RNA, the transformation still happened. But when they destroyed DNA, the transformation stopped completely. The conclusion was undeniable. DNA, not protein, was the transforming principle. This was the first solid proof that DNA carried hereditary information. But here's the twist. Many scientists at that time still refused to accept it. Because proteins seemed like the perfect candidate. Could something as plain and simple as DNA really hold the entire blueprint of life? That question lingered, unanswered. So, if Avery's team had already shown DNA was responsible, why did doubts remain? And who would finally close this debate once and for all? This very question led us to the legendary Hershey and Chase experiment. In 1952, two scientists, Alfred Hershey and Martha Chase, stepped in to finally settle the debate. They studied a virus called the bacteriophage, or simply phage, a virus that infects bacteria. This phage was made of just two things, a protein coat on the outside, and DNA on the inside. Now here's the brilliant part. Hershey and Chase labeled the DNA with radioactive phosphorus and the protein coat with radioactive sulfur. Then they let the phages infect bacteria. After the infection, they separated the empty protein shells from the bacteria using a blender. And what did they find? The radioactive phosphorus, the label on DNA, was inside the bacteria. But the radioactive sulfur, the label on protein, was left outside. The message was crystal clear. It was DNA that had entered the bacteria and carried the genetic instructions, not protein. This was the knockout punch. After Hershey and Chase, the scientific world could no longer deny it. DNA was the true hereditary material. And that's how the mystery unfolded, from Mendel's inheritance factors in 1866, to Griffith's transforming principle in 1928, to Avery's DNA evidence in 1944, and finally to Hershey and Chase's confirmation in 1952, the journey that revealed DNA as the true hereditary material. So the debate was over, DNA is the hereditary material. But a bigger question still remained. What does this molecule actually look like? Unlocking its structure would change biology forever. Curious to know how scientists cracked this mystery? Click on this video.